I just got back from uh, almost four months in Malawi and um, went there with the goal to paint and just kind of be around a new people, a new way of life and, and see how that felt and see if that was, see what the inspiration was in that to paint. And it was incredible. The people there were so, I, I kept trying, waiting to get to like the wildlife or the, the landscapes or whatever, and I couldn't get away from the people. I couldn't get enough of them. in um, Malawi, um, well, the first night I got there, um, there was a robbery that came into the house while we were sleeping and took pretty much everything um, that I'd brought, uh, about $10,000 worth of stuff, And but they left my primed paper and they left my paints, which was incredible because uh, that's something I couldn't have replaced. I couldn't have gotten more gessoed paper. And um, so I borrowed a camera and a laptop from people um, there in Malawi and uh, went out as soon as I could. I, I just could hardly wait and started taking images. And um, because they didn't have any way to print the pictures, I would just paint from the back of the LCD on the back of the camera. And I think the best was when I would go into the villages and see the children, see the women, see the men working, like actually there in their village. They were so warm and so welcoming, and um, often when I would take the pictures, I would then get them printed and take them back to the village, which is, you know, they've never seen themselves on a print. And even just taking the picture of them, I would then turn the camera around so they could see the back of the camera, um, and they would just start screaming and laughing and running and sometimes hitting each other. They just would go crazy because they'd never seen anything like that. So I ended up going to visit a Buddhist orphanage called Amatofo Care Center in Blantyre, Malawi, and drove down there. It was about six hours from the long way. I went down by myself and spent three days there just hanging out with the little girls, mostly the little girls, a little bit with the boys. I did some art with them, did some drawing with them. I would sit with them and do some reading with them, and, and then eventually was talking to one of the monks there, they're um, Taiwanese. And so I said, I don't know if me taking a percentage of my paintings, giving you the money, is what you need. And he said, ah, oh, we're fine. We don't need your money, which was an amazing thing to hear. He was very honest. And he said, we need books. And so I decided that I was going to try to find a way to get them books. But I've started doing art raffles. So I take one of my pieces of work and offer it. And for two books, two soft-covered books, I'm giving people a raffle ticket for the painting. And so um, just in one night last night at the show opening, we got over probably around 200 books. My goal for the paintings was I, I felt really excited to get them back here and to show them. So when I was done, I had painted all on paper. Um, on primed paper and rolled them up and um, put them in this tube with an arm strap on it and like a child like carried them onto the plane and got them to Seattle and then shipped them down to Utah and had um, an amazing show and the turnout was spectacular and they're just the response from people they were so interested in the whole Africa experience and they wanted to know about the orphanage and the books and the and like tell me about this painting and this wonderful couple bought this painting of a woman that I had met. Her name is Joyce, and she's like a bookkeeper, and she, they do all the data entry by hand. There's no computer. She has no idea how to use a computer, and she's like, I want to work. I want to work. I don't want to have kids, you know, not now, maybe later, but not now, and that's a really rare thing to hear that in Malawi, to hear a woman like, I want to work. She wants to have a career. Painting her was amazing, and then showing her at the show and then explaining it to someone who's interested in buying this and having this painting in their house was such a process and when we were there hanging the show earlier in the day I just felt like um, I was, like was going to cry because I was like I can't believe they've made it back here these paintings these like children that kind of came through and here they are at the show and then to have people respond so fantastically was really a beautiful thing. I developed a really amazing rapport with 
our housekeeper slash cook slash he did everything. It, it was interesting to have s such a beautiful rapport with him. This, this man who's the age of my father and um, has six children and every day he would go out and he would sit in the garage at about 10 o'clock and he would drink his tea. And I just loved seeing him out there because it was like his time and he was really quiet. And um, yeah, it was really lovely. So one day I asked him if I could take his pictures and paint him. <laughs> I'm trying to get a grant to go back to um, Malawi because I spent some time in a pottery there called Nkota Kota Pottery where I worked for two weeks with uh, indigenous clays using sawdust kilns and working with some locals who work there at the pottery trying to figure out how to do the figuratives that I paint in clay. And so I did them sort of small because I was working with some restraints with the kilns, but I want to do life-size. I felt like the people in Malawi were really gentle people, and I really connected with that, and I think a lot of people saw that in the paintings. But I think rather than pointing the finger outward and saying that it's because they were gentle, that that's why the paintings look the way they do and why the eyes are soft and the bodies are sort of soft and I think it's just because that's how I felt and so I think that as usual what's happening is that I'm having an experience of gentle and then I'm projecting it onto them and so I'm basically when I paint these paintings I'm painting myself but they have Malawian faces and so that's always how it is. I mean, I think it, I can't ever get away from this experience of this person, of this being. And so, and then in that, I just keep finding ways, whether it's landscapes or people, to project that onto them and, um, and then paint them. I, I think it would just get really boring to continually paint myself. And so with, with this face and this body, although the arms and the hands are always mine, um, uh, and I... I think I also had an experience of sort of bigness there, and I think that that is something that's happening in here too, which is sort of an expansiveness or space, and, and I'm projecting it onto Africa, onto Malawi, but how that wants to manifest now is that I want to do these really big paintings, and I've just rented a space in Seattle, um, a new studio that can do 10 to 14 foot paintings of groups of Malawians. Um, whether they're carrying firewood on their head or um, babies on their hips or holding pongas, which are big knives, uh, tobacco farmers or children at the orphanage. I want this show to feel like you're surrounded, so it needs to be in a building that can hold all these large paintings and then sort of you stand in the middle so that you can feel sort of surrounded by this bigness of Africa and also just this sense of there's so many, there's so many, and yet there's this wholeness. I think something in me grew up in Africa. I think I really something really shifted. Um, I really learned to take care of myself there. You know, just how to do it, how to do this whole thing. I'd never done anything like this. I've never left the United States and to go for almost four months in Africa and mostly be by myself there was pretty an amazing thing to see like, I could do this. Like if I can do this, I could probably do anything. Uh, Africa was a real gift in that way because I feel like whether I travel again, I don't know, but outside of the States, but I feel like I could now before I think I was too immature to do it and too afraid. I think that's probably it. I don't feel afraid anymore. Yeah.